Black Friday for bourbon. They are in line for the rarest of rare. Everyone's waiting for a chance to get Pappy Van Winkle, some of these rare whiskeys and bourbons. Many camped out through the pre-dawn darkness. Uh, so, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Some sell their bottle for a profit. You had to be in line for a long time. Very satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want to just try to make a few hundred bucks? <laughs> I think we're all nuts. <laughs> <laughs>
once considered a discount bourbon, now regarded as poor man's pappy. Okay, not the 107, that's the vintage label. Overpriced, overhyped. Oh, now we're talking. All right, not the pappy. Don't do the, what are you gonna do with the pappy? Pappy 23, what shall we do with you? No, 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 don't make, let's have a pour. Always wanted a bottle of this. A little ice. You don't need that with ice. You don't need ice with that. Now for a little mix. Hey, come on, man. Oh, don't do it. Don't, don't, don't pour in the coke. And perfect. Here, try it. No. No, I don't want to drink that. You've ruined it. I said drink it. All right. Uh. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. My God. Pathetic. Should we bottle kill this? <laughs> On second thought, I think I'll just smash it. No! This concludes the annual purge. The bourbon community thanks you for your participation. Blessed be our new founding distilleries. A nation reborn. Ugh. Well, it's been fun. Oh, and until next year. Drink more bourbon. <laughs> <laughs>Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy. If you like that video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed before, hit that subscribe button down below. Just wanted to talk real quick about the secondary market, the current situation with bourbon, and how out of control it's gotten recently. All right, I got a couple bottles of bourbon in front of me that I feel are super overhyped and overpriced on the secondary market. Bland's Original, one of the newcomers that's hit their secondary market really hard as of recent, kind of came as a shock to me. We get an ample supply of this here in Ontario a couple times a year. It's very well priced. I've seen this listed up to $300 retail at some places in the United States. Absolutely out of control. Very, very average bourbon in my opinion. Um, definitely not worth anything more than about uh, $60 I'd say. Same goes for the green. Um, they're coming in at even less proof and uh, more sought after. Not sure why. Weller, we all know Weller how much demand comes from these bourbons. Just really basic budget bourbon. I remember seeing them on the shelf. $35 Canadian, you know, $25 US is what these things used to sell for. Yes, they were maybe priced a little bit lower than their quality, but not much. I mean, these are very average, decent drinkers, but again, you're looking at well over $100 on the secondary market for something like this. You get into these special edition Wellers um, that are kind of more limited you know, 300, 400, 500, uh, when they first came out, $600 US on the secondary market, now sells around 400, $500 or so. Um, Elmer T. Lee, another just basic average bourbon in my opinion, nothing special about this bottle as far as I'm concerned. Um, and again, prices upwards of $200 US on the secondary market. Everyone knows Pappy Van Winkle, the poster child for secondary market inflation. You're looking at about 10 times the retail price on the secondary for any Pappy Van Winkle. You know, the 15 year around $1,500, the 20 upwards of 2,000, and the 23 upwards of $2,500 US on the secondary market. Don't get me wrong, this is very good bourbon. Don't let anyone tell you that it's not good. It is very good, but of course not worth 10 times the retail price. I think for any bourbon enthusiast, go out, try to find a bar or a restaurant that has a bottle of this, fork out the money, try it for yourself, knock it off your list, and I think the consensus is for people that have had Pappy Van Winkle, that yes, it's very good, but of course it is not the best bourbon in the world. So a lot of these bourbons that are produced in large, large amounts every single year are becoming harder to harder to find on the shelf. So what can be done about it? Well. 
I think for one is the responsibility of the retailer to sell these bottles at one per customer. I think that they really need some pressure from the distilleries to take these allocated bourbons and really stress that it's just one per customer and that's it. One of the main problems that we see with the secondary market is people going in, having uh, connections at liquor stores and buying their entire allotment. You see stuff like this all the time where lots of people have just gone out and bought cases upon cases of this and leave none for anyone else who actually wants to enjoy this stuff and not pay 10 times the retail price for it. You know, there are some retail stores that are really good that do do this. Um, you know, some Van Winkle stuff that is retail price, one per customer, is really a fair way of distributing it so everyone gets a chance and, you know, one or two guys don't come in and just wipe the shelf clean. I think that's the easiest way. The harder way is to restructure how alcohol is distributed throughout the states. Now, there's a three-tier system in the states. It's kind of complicated, but essentially it goes distillers, wholesalers, then retailers. It's really just a way to tax a bottle three different times. I think it's pretty far-fetched to expect any kind of reallocation when it comes to that system, just because the tax money is the tax money and it's always probably going to be that way. But if you had a system where the distilleries could sell right to the customers, then you could see something where you know prices wouldn't be inflated and they could do a, a one per customer kind of thing as well, or some kind of reward program, something like that, make it more fair for the whiskey enthusiasts to get the whiskey that they like. So that being said, if you are frustrated that you can't find a bottle of Blanc's, you can't find any Weller, you can't even find Elmer T. Lee, of course not Pappy, I'm gonna give you eight bourbons that I feel I like just as much as some of these, if not more, for a way better price. All right, so here is a great selection of alternatives to some bourbons that you can't find. Some of these I like just as much, some of them more. I'm not saying these replace anything that was previous, especially the Pappy, you're getting a kind of unique profile with that, but all these bourbons I'd be perfectly happy with. You can find them on the shelf for the most part. Some take a little bit of hunting, but they are all pretty well affordable and all really delicious. Let's start right here with Old Granddad 100, Bottle and Bond, Jim Beam product, uh, $20 US for this. Really great, rich, kind of peanut characteristic with this. Um, really like this one quite a bit, especially for that price point. Moving on, Woodford Reserve Double Oat. This one is double matured in a recharred, retoasted cask. Really sweet flavors coming out of this. Almost kind of like a maple syrup, waffle, pancake combo. Really, really good stuff. For 40 bucks, you can't go wrong with that. One of my favorites, Knob Creek. This is the nine-year-old single barrel. Uh, 120 proof for only 40 bucks. This is the bourbon that kind of got me into drinking whiskey. Really nice, rich, deep flavors. Nice spiciness on this one too. Can't go wrong with Knob Creek. Moving on to another single barrel. Let's go Four Roses. This one coming in at 100 proof. Really like this whiskey quite a bit. You can get this in cast strength version. Also store picks um, of these. I've heard are really nice, especially store picks of these ones too. If you want store picks of either of these ones, definitely go for them. Really good value and really good stuff. Uh, Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof. If you've had just the regular Jack Daniels, you'd be amazed of how different this one is. Really nice bourbon indeed. This one can stack up to anything in the $50 to $60 range in my opinion. Really performs well. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. This one is on everyone's good value bourbon list. Coming in at 12 years old, really high proof, really good stuff for what you're getting this. I'm not the hugest fan of this compared to other people perhaps, but it is really good bourbon for that $75 price point. Can't go wrong with Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. The next two you might have to hunt a little bit more for, but they're definitely worthwhile doing. Joseph Magnus, this one is finished in three different casts, two sherry and one cognac. Gives it a nice complexity of flavors, really sweet. Uh, bottled at 50% ABV. You're looking at between 80 to like $110 for this one, but definitely worth every penny in my opinion. Really good stuff. All right, last but not least is the E.H. Taylor single barrel. You'll notice I picked a lot of single barrels in this lineup. That's because usually they put in their good stuff in the single barrel expressions. This one coming in at 50% ABV. It is starting to be a little bit more difficult to find, although people do still see it on the shelf. It's really the E.H. Taylor, the this and the small batch are the only two you're probably gonna see on the shelf. The rest of them go right to the secondary. This one is kind of approaching there, but it is still found on the shelf. So scoop this one up if you see it. Really do like some of these single barrels from E.H. Taylor. They're really good stuff. So there it is. There's the lineup. Um, I'm confident in all of these bourbons. I do like them just as much, if not more, than any Blanton's and any Weller out there. 
Um, so if you can't find those bottles, don't worry, don't pay the secondary. Source out these ones, you'll be definitely happy with them. Let me know what you think of this list. Is there any bottle that you would add here as a replacement for something that can only be found on the secondary market nowadays? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the content on this channel, you love the Halloween videos, check out Patreon. You can support a bit more. You can win some awesome samples of some secondary market bourbon that you might not be able to find anywhere else. And if you're super frustrated with the bourbon secondary market, there's always next year's purge. Happy Halloween, everyone. Cheers.